Okay, so what are uh, the, uh, n the negative energies? How do they affect our life? Such as negative thinking, you mean? Or? Yes. Well, I like to tell my clients that really every thought is a prayer. And we can't control all of our thoughts. No, we can't. I mean, they just, but the ones that we really dwell on and think and focus on, especially with emotion, that the emotion ignites it. Yes. And everything is in thought before it comes into form. So I encourage them to really become conscious. I think that's really the key is about conscious living, whether I'm dealing with weight loss or stop smoking. I mean, I, I strive to practice it myself. I haven't mastered it, but We're it gets easier and easier, you know. Well, you're on the road. That's right. And every day of your life, it's about looking at what you have done right from the soul level and the self-empowerment. It's not outside of us, it's inside of us. And your awareness, that's the wonderful thing about being a therapist, is that you are growing and learning through the experiences of these individuals that come to you. There's something that they may be going through in their life mm -hmm. that is helpful to you because of what's happened in that Oh, it's session. always for me as much as it is for them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's such a reminder. So, you know, we're back to the idea of what happens to the body in negative thinking? Well, okay. So, like Dr. Umoto, was that his, the... Yes, the water the scientist. Scientist. Um, I love that book. I have it in the office so I can show the pictures to my clients. Yes. That, um, that he has done the double-blind studies and yeah. they have crystallized the water after speaking into it, negative words and positive words, and the negative words are distorted and the positive words are these beautiful crystal formations that since we're made mostly of water that what we're doing is we're putting that energy into our physical form so it affects the body it affects our health and our well-being and toxic thoughts are going to create toxicity in the body as well right and you know we could take it to the next level also where the sounds that you listen to mm -hmm. are affecting mm -hmm. your biology so if you're in a relationship where someone's always screaming and yelling at you, you can imagine how that affects the biology. And I think about these little kids who don't have the patient parent mm -hmm. and everything scream, yell, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Uh, also, you know, having an adult relationship, again, where the conversations are extremely negative and people wonder why they have health problems, mm -hmm. right? It also comes into uh, view when you're looking at the kind of food that you might be, for challenging reasons, drinking something in a row and not consciously understand the energy. That not only the, in bars especially, the energies are so thick and so intense in a bar. I don't go into them um, <laughs> because of my empathicness and ability to see certain things. You wouldn't want to go if you could see sometimes what I'm seeing. Hmm. But the fact is here you are drinking something that's toxic for your body and you may be having a toxic conversation. Hmm. Now you've escalated your emotions into maybe having a really challenging exchange in a conversation. So here's what happens to the body is the body, all the cells in the body are rapidly trying to write itself biochemically, electromagnetically. So I think that we have to learn how to do certain things to take care of our physical body, to clear that field. Like mm -hmm. when you're working with people, when you're having a, let's, uh, as an example, mm -hmm. you're working with somebody who has a very, very poor image of themselves and has a bit of a negative spin on life, okay? And you've now spent maybe an hour to an hour and a half or longer with this person, okay? Got some positive results. And now uh, they book another appointment and they leave your office. What are you doing for you? Well, I'll tell you, I kind of learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I brought this up because, and we wonder why we're dragging ourselves yeah. around at the end of the day. Because I'm, I'm, I 
take on really easily. I can feel. I mean, that's why I'm in the business because I have such compassion. So I, I'm very empathic that way as far as taking on their um, energy. So um, I've learned to do some exercises within my own mind of protection. Mm -hmm. um, because if I start to feel it in my body and, and my, my whole system starts to feel overwhelmed or exhausted, I realize that I'm taking on too much of, it's like they're dumping and I'm the sponge that's taking it, it ca carrying it away from them. And that doesn't work for me very well. So I would go home and I'd be so exhausted. So I've really had to learn to protect myself and sometimes I'm not even aware it's happening till I start really feeling it. And then I'll just, you know, shift into some protection exercises within my own mind. And it's amazing how it shifts. And I just feel lighter and yeah. more whole. Well, I think we, as therapists, you, it's best to get into a habit that after, before and after a client, to have some simple tools that clean the fill, uh, mm -hmm. uh, clean the uh, clear the field, because just moving your hands like this, mm -hmm. all the way from the top of your head all the way down like this, mm -hmm. okay, you have fluffed your aura and you've cleared your aura. If the lines in your body are running like this, mm -hmm. okay, then what happens is your life force is less than half. Say mm -hmm. you go into something and you've you're, you've got that straight up and down kind of energy field going on in your body. You've got less than half of your tank filled. And then you go into a challenging situation with a client. And I'm not just talking about the therapist end of it. We mm -hmm. always, we're always talking about what goes on with the client. But behind the scenes, we're mm -hmm. now talking about the therapist. Mm -hmm. Okay? I was married to a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I, I wondered... Uh, how this person could stay grounded with handling the type of cases that he had a lot of multiple personalities and a lot of a lot mm -hmm. more uh, mm -hmm. uh, difficult things on on that level and I watched him leave on a lunch hour and go to a cafeteria at the hospital and just consume large amounts of food mm. And then maybe a week later, after he'd put on, you know, about 10 or 15 pounds of consuming a lot of food, he'd go on an extreme diet and try to get himself under control again. But what he was totally unaware of was the energy, mm -hmm. completely. And so a lot of therapists who burn out, and, you know, I have a lot of uh, uh, therapists of different kinds that come through my practice, and I find that their fields are like around about like this, mm -hmm because they're so depleted and they burn out. It's like nurses burn mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. to anybody where you're going to be putting your hands around them. Sometimes you, you probably do some energy work on them, don't you? And sometimes I do. Yeah. So it's, it's just a good idea to have something in place that's going to completely take care of you where you can use that empathicness mm -hmm. because it's so beautiful, this gift that you have of empathicness. It, it really is. I, it's I, soft, and I can feel it. It's uh, soft and, and very comforting, almost like a fairy godmother, you know? <laughs> well, I tell my clients, I feel like if I was to describe myself, that I would say that I hold the energy of love. That's my intention, is to be, That's a be, good one. To be the love, you know, and to hold light. And that I can see in them what they can't even see for themselves. I can see beyond the behavior. I can see beyond the story. And... and I am able to tap into to the love that they really are. That's all I really see. And so, of course, some people that are really dysfunctional, I can feel it more. It's yeah. more toxic, and it's harder. Yeah. It is harder to um, hold that that space for them because I think sometimes they're not able to do it for themselves. I have to do it for them. But I do things like I use aromatherapy to cleanse my office between Good. each client. I have a fountain with water running. It feels to me like that helps. Um, I, you know, I've just got some beautiful things that I think have multi-purpose. I, I don't know what it's called. I have this like salt rock yes. lamp thing that's yeah. supposed to help. Yeah. You know, it puts uh, negative ions in right, the environment. Right. Negative ions and it creates ambiance. So, mm -hmm. and um, 
So that, I mean, I mean, we all do it in our own way. I would imagine you have feng weighed your office, too, so that the energetics I are, did. Yeah. yeah. See, so you did an awful lot of yeah. things right, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. And we can <laughs> well we continue to to learn more and more about energy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the fascinating part of being a hypnotherapist is that when you look at energy and see its range that can be really 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 high. Mm -hmm. And boy can you feel that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the angels are singing. Mm -hmm. Or when it drops and it gets mm -hmm. lower and lower mm -hmm. and lower and lower to where something goes off inside of you that you have to take care of you first. It's mm -hmm. like the baby on the plane, you know, mm -hmm. you're on the airplane, you got mm -hmm. the baby next to you, right. you take the oxygen right. first. Right. It's, it's really true. You have to be that aware of what's going on energetically for yourself and for, for your client, too. I've also learned that two clients a day, and my sessions tend to run an hour and a half to two hours. Two sessions a day is perfect for me. If I do more, I'm more exhausted, and so I pretty much you put your heart and soul into your into your work, and I think it's wise to take care of yourself because that's why there is this burnout. Can you imagine sitting in an office, and uh, whether you're a therapist uh, that's a, a psychologist, or you're a massage therapist, mm -hmm. and you're seeing up to six to seven people a day? Um, They've done studies on psychologists that basically, if they're running from like nine o'clock in the morning until six o'clock at night, um, they have a hard time staying mentally grounded mm -hmm. and balanced in their own personal life. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah, and massage therapists too. I found that uh, there was a friend of mine that wrote a book and she interviewed a bunch of therapists, including massage therapists, and she found that a lot of the therapists. Uh, in whatever their work was, were coming from something that needed to be healed within them. Mm -hmm. And that a lot of them, um, she interviewed a hundred therapists, and out of that hundred, every one of them had either been uh, molested or had had a rape experience. That's not a hundred percent across the board, but there's a high percentage that I've found in certain type of, uh, especially in massage therapy, and I'm certified in massage therapy. And I gave it up because of the transfer quality that I didn't know how to manage. Mm -hmm. It took years to understand what that empathic mm -hmm. thing was about mm -hmm. <laughs> so that I could manage that. Well, but I think there's a lot of healers that are attracted to the yes. work because of doing their own healing work. That's I was it. very blessed. I was, you know, I, I was able to do a trade with my mentor. I was a hairdresser and esthetician for... 20 some odd years and then slowly got into the healing arts you got trained and certified in Reiki and flower essence therapy and and um, you were called to all of that. yeah it just one thing just kind of led to another so as I felt more whole and complete I felt more called to help others yeah so. what do you think your next move is going to be in the in your calling in your life what's calling you now what else well, do you want to learn wor I'm working on a book with my mom Okay. And uh, so that's a fun adventure. We're doing retreats and workshops. Um, I just, I think the, mostly right now it's about about writing and, and teaching, kind of expanding it to a larger audience. And it just takes a life of its own. I don't really know.